Hey, Mark from Sam Matters here, talking all things vinyl, as always. Record Store Day is coming up on the 20th of April, but are the listings enough to get me off my backside and down the road to my local record store? I'm going to talk about some of the pros and cons of the event, and we'll discuss a little bit as to whether it still has the same draw, perhaps, that it used to. And then I'd like to hear from you, find out what your thoughts are. Are you going to pick up anything from the list this year. Let me know down in the comments at the end of this video, but it's time to get straight into the topic. Record Store Day of course started in 2007 when the vinyl format was at its most bleak from a sales viewpoint and undoubtedly I think it's played a big role in revitalizing the format and you know helping kickstart perhaps to a certain degree some of the vinyl revival that we've experienced over the last sort of 15 years or so but that's not to say that the event is not without its critics many do feel quite frustrated by the event and the direction that it's gone often citing things like you know major labels kind of forcing through their releases for record store day and hogging up production lines many also talk about you know just general greed and money grabbing in terms of the kind of releases that are put forward today as well. Actually a few years ago I put an industry article together on my website asking people from the vinyl community what Record Store Day meant to them. Of course most of the people who contributed were in the industry itself, there were some musicians that commented as well, but it was interesting to see in particular what the response was from social media because the response on the article was almost overwhelmingly positive but when I put it out onto social media there were a lot of very bitter responses about the event. This then prompted me to go and interview the founder of Record Store Day, Michael Kurtz, and get the other side of the story in the interest of balance. If you'd like to check out both of those articles in your own time you can do so at a link that I'll put in the description of this video but for today I'm just going to go through some of the list things and get my kind of initial reaction to what's being put out on Record Store Day and get a flavour as to whether I want to go to this year's event or not. Just a little topical note before we move on to the actual releases, it's Kate Bush who is the Record Store Day ambassador this year, at least for the UK event anyway, and I thought it might be nice to bring her up and see what she's got to say about the event. So here she is with her cat, cute cat. <laughs> uh, what a huge honour to have been selected to be ambassador for this year's Record Store Day. It really is a great privilege. Isn't it great to see how the resurgence in vinyl has taken the music industry by complete surprise? It had decided to leave vinyl far behind, but it would seem that not everyone agrees I love that. I know many, many other artists are just as excited to see the audience turning the tide. In the same way that some people like to read a book on a Kindle but also want to have a book as a physical object, a lot of people like vinyl and streaming. Both have different appeals. Definitely agree with that. The added bonus of vinyl is that it encourages people to listen to albums. I definitely agree with that too. An art form that I've always thought can be treasured in a unique way. An album is on vinyl rather is a beautiful thing, given a strong identity by its large scale artwork. There's a much more personal connection with the artist and their work. She then goes on to essentially go through what she's put together, how much she's enjoyed it, and wish everyone a happy record store day so some good points there and i just thought it'd be nice to bring that up i think we all feel pretty similar about the vinyl format given that you're watching this channel or at least i hope you do anyway so here's the list, at least the UK one. So apologies to my US viewers. I know most of you watch me from the US or North America as a whole. Let me know what's on your list from the US in the comments. It's just fun to talk about these things. Let me know if the US list looks better. I'd be very interested to hear. So the list is uh, scrollable, but I'm not going to go through absolutely all of them because it's a bit slow to load and some of them aren't loading properly either. I'm guessing there's a flood of traffic coming to the site at the moment because of the event, but I picked out a few that look, you know, at least semi interesting to me. The first one I saw on the list was potentially maybe Black Sabbath Paranoid. I'm not a huge Black Sabbath follower, but I could do with getting this album in my collection perhaps. So there's a red splatter limited edition version of the album here, and I'm not sure I like Black Sabbath enough to warrant buying a limited edition red splatter vinyl version of it. You know, all debate about coloured vinyl, black vinyl aside. And, you know, if I were to take a look at the price of it, just picked out record store here, 
record store here. It's obviously going to cost more because it's limited edition. They're asking $28.99 for this, and the same store sells a regular copy of it for $22.99. Of course, I don't know anything in particular about the mastering, and it would be nice, actually, if they told us a little bit more about maybe who cut the record, maybe a little bit more information here. They don't actually, on the website at least, give us much information about the actual pressing, just the fact that it's on red splatter vinyl. So anyway, that was the first one. Next one I picked up was... Part Life by Blur. Now, you know, this being a massive album in the UK, of course, one when I was growing up and a big favourite of mine back in the day. This is a Zoetrope LP, so it's one of those moving picture records. You know, kind of cool. I'm seeing a big trend towards these at the moment. Of course, there's lots of people releasing Zoetrope records. Bit of a novelty, of course. It's not going to sound that great, probably, because it's a essentially a picture-type disc and of course sound quality of picture discs you don't buy picture discs for the you know pristine sound quality you buy them because it's a beautiful product and you really love the album but you know that's a maybe on my list i could be i could be swayed maybe to pick one of these up just for the pure novelty and because i like the packaging side of it so you know yeah, maybe uh, the next one i pulled out which i think is a little bit silly actually <laughs> is rumors picture disc i mean come on do we really need another release of rumors uh, as a record store day special least of all a picture disc version of it i don't know i'm not sold i think perhaps we can do a little bit better creatively in terms of that kind of side of things as much as i do like rumors as an album another zoetrope disc i saw here is a zinc alloy re-release uh, re zinc alloy by mark bow i don't think it's his strongest album in terms of you know the the t-rex stuff um yeah I, I mean it could be a pretty cool thing to own i've got an original pressing anyway uh but i don't know i'm not sure it's a, a favorite enough of mine of a record by t-rex to justify me spending the money on this as cool as it might be and as i say there is a bit of a trend towards these zoetrope discs at the moment so it's a bit of a trend a bit of a fad perhaps even you know a bit of a gimmick uh, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm willing to part with my money on that one just yet. The last one on my list is a reissue of the first Rolling Stones album. And it's based on the original UK cover. And it comes in a blue vinyl with limited edition numbering on the back and some lithography print images by the photographer Terry O'Neill. You know, maybe. Again, these are all maybes. I don't desperately need or want to add these in my collection. It would just be... I guess buying them because they're a cool kind of thing you know looking at the price of it it's 30 pounds which you know is a reasonable sum of money i've paid more for a new record though i've certainly paid more for an original pressing i think i probably would pay more than this if i was looking for an original pressing in good condition of this album so i could be swayed into something like this there's another one on the website here which isn't a limited edition and doesn't appear to be kind of special in any way but it's based on the us cover of the album so i guess for the price difference although it does look like they, look like they put this on sale given that there's a new version I, I could be swayed by this i do much prefer the simplicity actually of the original uk cover so there's a lot of maybes in here for me anyway i think is a is, is what i'm taking away but now really before i hand it over to you it's time to just kind of summarize my overall feelings about record store day as an event where it is now and its importance one way or the other to summarize i think record store day still is overall a force for good and if production lead times are a huge issue then i think of course the answer is more record pressing plants more production facilities which has happened to a certain degree of course i've talked about the fact that vmp are opening up their own plant and jack white of course has opened up his own record plant and there's been other ones across the united states and also within my country in the uk as well open since i had those initial interviews with the people regarding record store day and some of those 
issues. However, I don't disagree that there are still production bottleneck problems, and of course there's still a great deal of quality control issues that need to be addressed. So I feel the pain of people, and I see where people are coming from when you have such a big rush for an event like this, how it can cause additional pressure. I have to say though, I do find this year's list a little bit uninspiring for me personally. You may disagree, you might find lots of gold in there that you're gonna pursue, but for me personally, my music taste and what I look for it's uh, I don't know I, I just feel a little bit uninspired and I do sympathize with the feelings of money grabbing that may or may not be going on I mean another picture disc or you know release of rumors in general do we really need that can we not be a little bit more creative than this as much as I love rumors you know I think it's a fantastic album absolute classic undeniably so but really you know can we be a little bit more creative than that can we do something a little bit different rather than churning out the same stuff over and over again repackaging the same things over and over again that to a degree i really do see why people think a lot of this is just money grabbing that being said though my gut feeling is that it's still a really important event for bringing in newcomers into the hobby and of course shining a light on those independent bricks and mortar record stores that need all the help they can get if they're going to compete with big behemoths that sell a ton of vinyl like people like amazon for example if they're going to compete with that and still have a place within the market they need all our support they can get will i rush out to go to my local record store well i probably will but i'll probably leave it until the afternoon i'll certainly not be queuing up at the beginning of the day to guarantee that i get anything if that means i miss out on a particular release or pressing then so be it but i'm not sure i want to deal personally with the crowds maybe i'm just being anti-social but i actually really love to re shop at record stores midweek when it's a little bit quieter a bit less hectic that's just me you know but it's now kind of basically at this point it's over to you have you seen anything on the list this year that you particularly like are you going to rush out for are you a little bit cynical a bit jaded about the whole event in in general i really just want to hear your thoughts from the vinyl community down in the comments section below so that concludes today's video thank you ever so much for watching if you'd like to support sound matters further you can do so through patreon where you'll get some additional bonus content each month and of course you can use the various discount codes that i always include in the description of every single video i get a small commission on those vinyl goodies at no extra cost to you and i appreciate every bit of support that you guys have given to me you really truly have been fantastic out there in the youtube community and of course beyond in terms of the uh, sound matters community and vinyl community wider and over all but that's it for today's video that's out and over and out over over that's over and out from me and if you're new to this channel please do consider subscribing and until that next video make sure you sit down listen to some really good records enjoy the music and i'll see you in that next video take it easy